Namaste and welcome to Live, Love, Engage. I am your host, Gloria Grace Rand. And as you can see, for those of you watching on YouTube, I have a guest with us today and her name is Angela Lee. And uh, this lovely lady has um, been through the fire, as we should say, in uh, actually quite literally, in fact, um, and we'll be talking a little bit about that today, but she has come through on the other side and is now actually a children's author and is really um, committed to helping helping kids. And uh, I'm so delighted that she's here today because she is really the epitome of being able to kind of come back and, and live fully and, and love deeply and engage authentically. So, so welcome, Angela, to Live, Love, Engage. Thank you so much, Gloria. I am so thrilled to be here. And, you know, I, sometimes I wonder, did I jump off the cliff or did I pull myself up by the bootstraps? One or the other, maybe both. Who knows? <laughs> well, um, you know what? whatever works right <laughs> i think is the important thing yeah so so tell us a little bit about how you got uh, tell us a little bit about your story and how you got into uh how you got into writing well it was all set up by my childhood and i was um, born in san francisco in the mid 60s so i lit and i lived in haight ashbury so as a youngster i saw a lot um, Golden Gate Park was right across from my house. And so it was almost an idyllic childhood, except I had an alcoholic father who could be abusive. Mm -hmm. My mother, however, was very angelic and still is. <laughs> and, um, all of that came to a head in 1969 when our house burned down. Mm. Um, it was a flat, so there were, you know, three houses in one, and all of us lost our house. At the time, my parents couldn't find housing, so we were split up, and the kids were sent off to different people. Um, I was sent to a friend of my dad's who I, we had never met. So it was effectively being put in foster care mm -hmm. for three months while my parents tried to pull everything back together. And I'm pretty sure that the effects of my childhood, um, those things led me to place the value of others before me. Um, so not loving myself enough mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and fast forward into my adult years, I married young to an older man mm. and everything was fine until we had a son. And that was about the time that he started controlling and emotionally abusing me and our son. And, um, I believe that everyone is good in their heart, and I believe that everyone deserves love, mm. and I stayed for 32 years in that marriage. Mm. Um, not something I would recommend <laughs> to anyone, because <laughs> I was, you know, intermittently miserable and, you know, in, still in love and happy. Yeah. And, um, you know, every marriage has its up and downs, but there were times when I was screamed at for eight hours straight oh. over his, his perception that I wasn't supporting him. Mm. And so that kind of emotional abuse, I don't recommend that anyone go through really. And I was there because I was in a victim kind of mode. I, I was in that victim energy. He did this to me. What I didn't realize at the time was I allowed him to do that to me. <laughs> and it took me leaving the marriage, um, which was also 
surrounded by fire. Um, so in 2017 in Sonoma County, California, there was a wildfire and that w destroyed our home as well as 5,000 other homes. Oh my gosh. And that was my wake up call. Yeah. yeah. So, so then what happened? Did you wind up then leaving your husband at that point? Or? Yeah, I started, I went into a dark night of the soul and I started questioning my own existence. Mm -hmm. uh, but also at the same time, when all the things that keep us busy in life are removed from our life, there's no house to take care of, there's no book club, there's no <laughs> stores to go shopping at. Yeah. <laughs> um, all of that is gone. And all you have left is a relationship. That's when you have to look at it and say, does, is this the way I'm meant to live? Right. And the answer was no. Yeah. So it took me a few more months to work up the courage, um, not that he was abusive um, physically, but I knew that he lashed out when he was hurt. Mm. And so I knew also that hurting, I would hurt him greatly to leave the marriage. Yeah. So I wasn't sure how he would respond. And I did leave <laughs> and um, I, I actually ended up living in a, a small rental above a garage on the top of a hillside behind three electric locked gates. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to realize why I was behind those three locked gates. And it was... Not that I was afraid he was going to come hurt me. I was afraid he was going to come and convince me to come back. Mm. Mm. I didn't yet value myself enough mm -hmm. to be strong enough to say no. Yeah. So I moved to England. <laughs> <laughs> well, that puts some distance between you, doesn't it? <laughs> it did. And it gave me healing room now. Yeah. If he tried to manipulate me back, which I'm sure he won't because he's none too happy with me. <laughs> um, I would not, I would not choose his needs before mine at this point in time. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's quite a story. And so in, in the process of going through this major changes, is that, um, is that what le led you to actually start writing? Was that a way for you to be able to start um, even, even maybe even helping you with some of your feelings? I, I was, the yeah. reason I asked it is I was just on a, I was doing an inter I was being interviewed yesterday, um, doing, talking about the writing process and, and the woman interviewing was saying that, yeah, a lot of authors say that writing is very healing for them. Indeed. Yeah. I, my first book was a compilation book and it's called Ignite Your Life for Women, I, <laughs> which is funnily enough. But <laughs> <laughs> hmm, fire yeah. just follows you around, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. But that was also the ignition of my writing. So mm -hmm. it's a good yeah. thing. Um, I wrote about the fire and leaving my marriage, mm -hmm. but the theme of what I wrote was about forgiveness mm -hmm. and what I needed to learn and what that whole process of writing that chapter was about me letting go of blame for him mm -hmm. and forgiving myself mm -hmm. for my choices. Yeah, that's so important. I'm so glad you were able to do that. Yeah, it, it made all the difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, in all the work I've done on myself, I know that that's, that's where it stems from. Because if you can't forgive yourself or love yourself truly, then it's going to be hard to be able to have those good relationships with other people. Yeah. Um, so, so for those of you who are not able to see this on video, if you're just listening, um, 
Angela has this lovely background that has a cover of a book and it is called <laughs> uh, Bella Santini in the Land of Everlasting Change. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how that came about, that book. So it's funny because I started writing a fairy tale for my friend's daughter mm. back when I was married. So mm. this was before the fire even. In fact, the fire destroyed the first version of this fairy tale. Mm. Okay. Um, and I started over. The story follows a young girl as she is... Um, taken from earth and and brought to a strange world where she has to figure out how to maneuver and her goal in book one is to try and get back to earth and her family um but i realized i was writing my life lessons into the book mm. and at first, I thought, oh, this is about learning self-love. Mm. And then I realized that, no, these books are about staying out of victim perception mm. and learning how to manage feelings. And that got me onto, well, the um, right now I'm working with other people to stop teen suicide mm. and because my fairy tales are aimed at age 8 to 11 I it's like an upstream intervention teaching them self-love and how to manage their own feelings mm. so when they get to the teen years they're not in this space of not knowing having these huge feelings and not knowing how to deal with them yeah absolutely yeah because it is becoming an adolescent is um you know in in the best of times i think especially even it's it's challenging uh, and it's even challenging you know it's challenging for kids who have two loving parents but if you've got anything else going on that kind of crimps that a little bit, you know, throw something out of whack, then it becomes even that much more magnified. Uh, I mean, I remember my own adolescence. I also had grew up with an alcoholic dad and, you know, and there were sometimes I had, you know, fleeting moments of, you know, committing suicide, but I, I never pursued it beyond that. I think partly because I, um, one reason is I know my mom had a really had a best friend who did who did that. And I remember as a little girl just seeing how devastated my mom was. And I felt like as as frustrated as I was with my mom at times, it was like I just couldn't bring myself to do that. I, I you know, I felt yeah. really devastated her and I didn't want to do that to her. And and you know, I I had ideas of suicide as an adult mm -hmm. in my marriage because of the pain right. I was feeling in my marriage. How can I make this pain go away? Sure. I didn't know how to deal with pain at that time. Mm -hmm. I've learned <laughs> since the fire how. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> but, um, you know, I certainly understand the thought process and um you know, I'm, I am not saying that my fairy tales will stop a teen from suicide. What I'm saying is if we give them these tools ahead of time, we can affect the trend. Yeah, absolutely. And, and at least it gives them something else to think about. And that perhaps then maybe they'll be more inclined to reach out for help and, and to be able to, you know, not have it go that far so so that's awesome that you've been able to do that um one one thing i wanted to ask you about in you know all of the things that you've had to do um you know you seem to be in a much better place now so um how does gratitude play into your life right now what, what do you feel like the most grateful for now i am so grateful for life mm every bit of my life 
including all the hard feelings and the hard things that I went through because I would not be able to truly understand what other people are going through if I didn't experience what I experienced. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I could, I could speak with understanding to a woman who is going through abuse. Mm -hmm. I can speak with understanding to a child who is struggling with self-worth. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've been there, I've done them both. Yeah. And so life is beautiful. <laughs> the world is beautiful. Mm -hmm. and people are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even the ones who um, don't always treat us that way, or maybe, you know, don't seem that way on the surface. But it is yeah. important to remember it, it's um, one of the things taught in my book is that when we are triggered by what somebody else does or mm -hmm. says, they are holding a mirror up that reveals within us mm -hmm. a wound that we need to pay attention to. <laughs> and so yeah. if, if we ignore that wound, we go through life and we get triggered and triggered and triggered and triggered. Mm -hmm. But if we pay attention and we seek to find, okay, where is, where is that trigger feeling? Right. How am I feeling it? And then, so it, when you can feel it and then acknowledge it. So I am feeling really upset over this, really frustrated, <laughs> really angry, really, mm -hmm. I'm in rage over it. However you're feeling and then allow that feeling, mm. just allow it. Yeah. Because it's okay for you to feel whatever you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, don't, don't ever let anybody tell you to, you know, like cheer up right away mm. because I've, I've had someone do that to me and it's, and it's so frustrating because it's like, just, just let me feel this for a moment. You know, I, I will cheer up, but I've, I've got to have this feeling you you can't just turn it off. There's a, there's a difference between well first off, you know, don't cry, cheer mm. up. Oh yeah. Put a smile on your face. Right. Um those are all denial and resistance mm. of the feelings. Yeah. And resistance only means that it will persist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And when we feel our feelings, we don't need to wallow in them. True. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. When we, if we simply feel, acknowledge, and accept, mm -hmm. that can let the feeling go. When we grab onto a feeling, and I talk about this when I talk, I talk about grief when I talk about this, because mm -hmm. We can all identify with someone who lost someone right. and it's so bogged down in grief, they don't see that they have life left in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we identify with a feeling, I am angry, mm. that claiming it, I am, mm -hmm. creates an identity for us. Yeah. We are better off if we say, I feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then we don't own it. Yep. And it is not us. Yeah. Yes. And so, you know, it's like, I talked to a psychologist and she said that she had shown a timeline to a grieving man whose wife had died. He was 65 years old. Mm. And she showed him how much life he had left. And when he saw that, he realized he had made his identity that of the widower. Right. And he had determined no more life, no more fun, no more anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. When she, she held up the timeline for him, he was able to see, 
I'm doing this to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's right. Let it go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I actually just watched a movie recently on um, Amazon uh, Prime, uh, and it was uh, called The Bachelors, and it was about the same thing. It was a uh, husband, and he had a teenage son, or a father with a teenage son, and his wife had died, and he let his grief consume him so much that, I mean, he even ended up in the hospital, and his son was like, you know, okay, if you're going to die, just, you know, die, but, you know, don't make me go through this long, slow, agonizing, you know, mm -hmm. process. Like I had to watch, you know, mom die, who I guess probably had cancer or something, and he had to see his mom die. And, and that enough of a shock that he kind of, you know, realized that, oh, yeah, he didn't want to be able to, of course, it's a movie, you know, it gets resolved quickly. And, you know, for the last act, and then life is like yeah, that. life ends up nice <laughs> again. But, but still, and it was, yeah. yeah, it's like, when you disassociate your identity from that, mm -hmm. then you can pick up and start, it doesn't mean you will never grieve. Again. Right. Yeah, exactly. You always have that loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's not about resisting the grief. And it's not about connecting into the grief. Mm -hmm. um, it's about riding the waves and knowing it is a wave and that things will change. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so important. Um, I'm so glad that you, you know, that you've been able to do this work. I think it's so uh, important. Now, this is just the first book. You have like more books, right? Coming. <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about that. This is um, Bella Santini in the Land of Everlasting Change is on Amazon, and I'll put the links in the chat. Yeah. Um, and it is book one. Okay. I have book two poised. So anytime in the next three months, it should hit Amazon oh, and Barnes and Noble and all the other places. <laughs> yeah. um, and then book three, I just finished the final edit. It goes to proofreading and then illustration. So by the end of the year, I think book three will be out. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm finishing the writing of book five. Oh, my. So. oh, wow. Okay. All right. So you're just becoming JK Rowling. All right. That's good. I like that. <laughs> That'd be cool. And if anybody listening, you know, hey, knows anybody who can, uh, you know, probably make a video story of these, it sounds like it would be probably make a wonderful um, film or, or something to, to help kids because kids are so visual these days, I'm sure. It's true. And part of my contract, um, I'm now with Waterside um, Productions, and part of my contract is um, involves them seeking video. Oh, good. I, I told them, hey, I'd like Pixar to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who yeah, would? Awesome. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started. I've been watching Pixar shorts lately and just saw one the other day that was uh, float, I think is the name of it. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. You, you know it. Oh my God. Just I, cry. I wrote a whole blog post about oh. A float. Oh, that's where I found it from. Yes. It was, I, <laughs> that's right. You were the one who told me about it. I read it on your website. That's right. Oh, yeah. it's so awesome. That, it's, that one. Yeah. it's so, and at the front of my books, I have a little, um, like six pages for parents mm. and I'm a little bit um, inspired by the message in float mm. because the message in float is let your children be who they are. Yeah. And so now the first six pages <laughs> of my books are um, just little hints about how you can let your children be who they are. And then there's a promise um, from the adults to the child mm. that I will love you unconditionally. Mm. Mm. And then there's a promise from the child to the adult, I will love you unconditionally and I will love me unconditionally. Mm. And yeah. that's kind of how I'm hoping <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to 
affect a little change. In Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think I, and I'm just going to put this out there too, is I was, I would even encourage parents out there to, to read the book themselves first, probably before even giving it to their kids. Because sometimes I think the reason that so many kids wind up, you know, not feeling their feelings is because the parents also have, have these issues too. And so, we were never taught how to, yeah, they weren't taught. <laughs> right. And, and it's still not part of curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that, you know, schools can grab onto my book and make it a part of their curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because one of the, you know, if you think about substance abuse, mm -hmm. suicide, um, you know, social just, media, uh, <laughs> bullying, yeah, and it, stuff. Yeah. it's all based on not being comfortable, fearing the feelings you're having. And so you're escaping them. Yeah, exactly. And so how much of a change can we make? Mm -hmm. All of that, yeah. if we teach kids how to feel their feelings. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this has been amazing. And I think I feel like I might even have to have you back another time sometimes because <laughs> there was like more things I wanted to talk to you about that I, I but I may save it for another time just because we, we went down an interesting road today and I've been enjoying it. Um, before we go, is there something, um, maybe, maybe even, um, do you have an example of someone that perhaps you've helped actually even through, you know, your writing um, of, of these books? Have you, have you had any feedback or anything from that? Well, um, I haven't had feedback from my fairy tales other than, you know, I've gotten really good reviews. There's um, a lot of five-star <laughs> reviews on the fairy tales. Beautiful. But I, I did, um, two years ago, I spoke in Mill Valley at, um, I forget the bookstore name, but <laughs> that's not good of me. But anyway, I, uh, Book Passages. Mm -hmm. I spoke at Book Passages in Mill Valley about writing the Ignite Your, um, Ignite Your Life for Women mm -hmm. book. And mm -hmm. a woman in the audience heard my talk and was inspired to write her own story. So oh. she joined the ignite book is a series of books okay. and so she joined one of the ignite books and wrote her story mm -hmm. and i was really pleased with that just you know i don't think of myself as an inspiring person <laughs> and yet i did make a little difference right there and that's the thing because we all can make a little difference absolutely and i would i would say that I would urge you to reframe that because you are an inspiring person because when you look back at all that you have survived and overcome and now here you are you know you're writing five you've got five books <laughs> essentially <laughs> just about done um that you've been written you know in addition to your others and you are making a difference in the world and being a light so you are inspiring so own that my dear <laughs> <laughs> and um so um before we go, if someone wants to be able to learn more about you, um, and other than, of course, I will definitely have the links to the books on Amazon, but um, do you have a website or something? How can people contact you? I do have a website. It's https, mm -hmm. and the two dots, slash, slash, mm -hmm. Angela Lee, A-N-G-E-L-A, Lee, L-E-G-H, dot com. There is no I in Lee. <laughs> very good all right well i know we'll have that in the show notes too so yeah um and i didn't even actually ask you so are you doing any other work in addition to the writing do you do any other type of work with adults let's say <laughs> <laughs> of course i do um, i i teach adults how to connect into their inner child yeah. because Childlike wonder um, is the magic of life. Mm. 
love, curiosity, playfulness. These are components of childlike wonder. So I have an online class that I teach adults how to do that. Oh, wonderful. All right. Well, see, they can get all that information, I'm sure, at your website. So it is on my website. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll make sure that uh, you check that out because, yeah, you know, it's been it's been a certainly stressful year, year and a half uh, ever since the pandemic hit. And um, we need more fun in our lives uh, to overcome some of that. So if you need some help remembering who you were as a kid and having fun, go check out Angela's <laughs> website. I encourage you to do that. I also want to say one more thing, and that is um, it's so important for me to get my fairy tale into the hands of children mm -hmm. that on my website is a link to the book for free. Mm -hmm. So people who cannot afford to buy the book can still get it for their child. Mm -hmm. And that is um, just, that's how important this is to me mm -hmm. to help children. Well, that's awesome. It's very generous. And um I really wish you all the luck in the world in getting it into more schools because it sounds like a yeah, wonderful way of being able to gently um, and creatively encourage kids to not be afraid of their feelings, but to be able to learn how to manage them. And yeah. it's such a good skill to have. Well, thank you, Angela, for being with us today. I am so glad to have met you and to have had you on Live, Love, Engage today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Gloria. I look forward to further conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Um, make sure that you are a subscriber, um, you know, wherever you are listening, whatever podcast platform or uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.